I recently got an email from Mohsen Kosravian, and hopefully I got that right, Mohsen. Um, he asked, um, how can we create a learning style quiz like this page in Adobe Captivate? Every question has three answers, and at the end of the quiz, percentage of total answers collected and show the learning style. So your learning style is, and then you want to show the result for each um, for each uh, type of learning style. Now, before we get into this, I want to clearly say that learning styles are one of those things that some people believe them to be valid and other people believe them to not be valid. This video is not a debate about that. We're not going to get into that. I'm just going to address the technical requirements of providing your users, your learners, with a survey where they can assess their own personality traits. And whether you believe in learning styles or not, I'll leave that up to you. So let's go into, um, first of all, let's take a look at the learning style quiz that uh, most Mosin is trying to recreate here. So let's just click this link and this brings us to um, studyingstyle.com and it talks about um, or rather it provides us an example of some questions that you can ask someone and they make selections A, B, or C and depending on the result it should provide them a sense of what their quote-unquote learning style is. So I've duplicated that and this is what I've done. So I've created all of those questions, very simple slides where I simply, you know, complete the, I, I state complete the following sentence with the item that best describes you. So when learning something new I need to A, B, or C. And then the next question complete the following sentence with the item that describes you. When assembling equipment or furniture, I prefer to A, B, C, and so on. So, to set this up, you can, of course, do all the legwork first and create all of the question slides, and then have a simple summary slide at the end where you calculate those results. Um, but once you've done that, whether you do that after or before, it doesn't really matter. There's a couple of things you need to set up right off the bat. The first thing you need to set up is you need to create a variable for each of the three possible answers. Now in this case here, I've already gone ahead and done that. I'll bring up the variables window by clicking on the project drop down menu and selecting variables. And I'll show you these variables that we have here. So we've gone ahead and created a variable for auditory, the initial value of zero, and I put a little description in here to make it clear as to what that variable is going to be containing. Same thing for kinetic, some people call it kinesthetic. Um, again, it's just a description and an initial value to start off. The third one is visual, and that's again the initial value of zero, and of course uh, we'll, we'll show you how that gets incremented. There's a fourth variable that I create, and it's simply called profile, and this is actually where we're going to put the visual style, or sorry, the learning style uh, once we've assessed it. Uh, and this will be the greatest result of all the answers that the user has input. So we'll close that off. You, so you've got the, the four different um, variables, auditory, kinetic, visual, plus profile, which is really just a result variable. Now, to make this all work, what we do is we have three buttons. In this case, actually, there's smart shapes that I'm using as a button. And for each one, I'm having it uh, run um, an advanced action. And there are three different advanced actions that could potentially be run. If they choose answer A, we're going to run the uh, advanced action for add one to visual. 
if we choose answer B, add auditory, and three, add kinetic. So let's take a look at, we'll use kinetic as an example, what's actually in that advanced action so you understand how you can recreate this on your own. So we'll click the little folder icon next to that and that will bring up the advanced action window for that particular advanced action. All I'm really doing, it's very simple, the action name is add underscore kinetic, so it's kind of self-explanatory and I increment, which means add to, the variable kinetic by one. So if it's zero, as it would be on the first slide, it w if I've selected this option, then it will become one. And if I select this option again on another slide, it will become two and three and so on. So essentially I've created three different counters, one for each of the three possible results then go to next slide. So the advanced action progresses to the next slide automatically. Let me hit close here. You'll notice I don't have any other navigation controls and I would probably choose to hide any navigation controls uh, like the play bar across the bottom because I only want them to press these. I don't want them to press back and then add to their totals again later. So once I've gone through all of these, I land on this results page. And how you create this uh, results page is a couple of things that, that need to happen. So on the entering of this page, I run another, in this case a fourth advanced action, and it's simply called profile. So let's take a look at what profile looks like. So I bring up the advanced actions window for the script called profile and what I've done is I have three different if action or if then actions created and they're done by using um, these controls across here where I can have more than one decision within one advanced action and this is very useful if you are deciding on something that there are simply more than two possible outcomes. So in this case here, I have these three layers. So what happens is that when we load this advanced action, it looks at the first statement and it says, if visual is greater than auditory and visual is greater than kinetic, assign profile, which is that fourth variable if you recall. I'm sorry, this makes it a bit confusing because I have an action name called profile and a visual name, a visual, or sorry, a variable called profile as well. Uh, too many words that are similar to one another. I should have really called this something else or called this action name something else, but I think you can muddle through. Uh, assign profile with the literal value in this case, not a variable, but the literal value of visual. So the word visual with quotation marks around it here um, is telling the, the system that the profile variable is visual. In other words, if everything is true about these statements up here, the person who's completing this survey is a visual learner. And we have the same thing duplicated for auditory, if auditory is greater than kinetic and auditory is greater than visual, profile, assign the, uh, the variable profile with the word auditory. And third option, of course, is if kinetic is greater than visual and kinetic is greater than auditory, assign the variable profile with kinetic. So I think you see what's happening here. So let's close this off. Now one of the great things that you can do and I will just actually I'll recreate this right here. We'll get rid of these guys here. Okay, so we just have a text box. Your primary learning style is 
and if you go down to the properties panel and if you're looking for it under the character you'll see character information you'll see uh, you can insert symbols and you can insert hyperlinks but you can also insert variables so if we click on this you'll see an insert variable window open up you can choose what type of variable you're going to insert in this case we're going to use a user variable and we're going to select that so again this is for this is that profile variable so we're going to choose profile you can choose the maximum length of characters certainly 50 is enough you could probably even lower that to 20 and then click OK and that puts in the appropriate code um, to recognize that we want to show the variable profile. I'm going to put a period here because it is a sentence and so now I'm going to display the results of each of the three um, counters if you will. So you selected and we have a little blank spot for this here uh, so we're looking for the auditory answers so we're going to insert the variable auditory and we're going to do the same thing for the following two sentences uh, kinetic answers and then lastly we're going to do one for the visual as well So again, let's summarize here. We've had a whole series of slides where by pressing one of these three buttons, we are adding the value of one to a variable called visual, a variable called auditory, or a variable called kinetic. So that by the time we arrive on this final page, there's going to be a number associated with each of the three possible learning styles that are displayed here. We do a little bit of comparisons with our advanced actions for, for profile where we end up with a variable called profile. Again, sorry I should have chose something different. That includes the word auditory, kinetic, or visual depending on which result has the highest number of answers. So that should produce the results we're looking for. Let's do a preview of this real quick and we'll show you and we'll see if it works. So I'm going to preview project and this should just take a moment. So here's our first question, and I'm not going to read through each one of these. I'm just going to randomly select some. Uh, a, B, or C will mostly do B, um, but I'll do one or two of A as well, and one or two of C. We'll do a couple of these here, and we'll do the rest all Bs. So, learning style evaluation results. Your primary learning style is auditory. That's true, for me anyway. You selected 12 questions, preferably an preferring an auditory answer, one question preferring a, ki a kinetic answer, and two questions preferring a visual answer. So again, guys, just a quick reminder that I'm not going to discuss the merits of learning styles in this video and there's no need for you to email me or put comments about that right there. Uh, mostly what we're showing you here is how to use advanced actions to create a survey that essentially keeps score of or keeps track of a uh, user's different traits that are being selected or evaluated. So you can see that works rather well and of course you could hit continue and proceed with the rest of the project. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing, I encourage you to, to subscribe to my channel 
And if you thought this video was good, don't hesitate to give me a thumbs up.